now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight in that city you see right below you, New York, New York. That there be Lori Thompson. Hi. Wave to the <laughs> folks out there, Lori. How y'all doing? How Lori <laughs> figures in my life, for people who don't know, is she was by the newswoman on my radio show in San Francisco for... What, 11 years, something like that? Well, how many years yeah. was I there? On and Lots, off. lots of years, at yeah. least a decade. And then there was a period where we, where you'd go to a summer camp and then Where well, I had been back. fired and I went to Florida. I know, man. And I don't envy you because coming, if I'd come to Florida directly from San Francisco, the culture shock would have probably blown my ears out. When I, when I moved to Florida, and I took it because there was a job offered me there. In fact, what happened was they, they asked me to come down to Florida to replace somebody for a week. Mm -hmm. uh, they said they'd heard about me and would I come down and replace this guy. So I, uh, I went down and replaced him. And by Friday, they took me out to lunch and said, would you like to get a permanent job, job here? And I yeah. thought to myself, well, I'm out of work. How much you want to pay me? And they were going to pay me <laughs> yeah. just what I was making in San Francisco. Rock so, on. So, uh, uh, fine, you know, I'll do it. Uh, and uh, I moved down there. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was the ugliest, most horrible time I've ever had. To begin with, I made a big mistake. I moved into Coconut Grove. And oh, co that's where my husband lived with his wife. It, um, that it, it, this other... was terrible. I, I on Saturday night I couldn't get out of my apartment because of all the traffic. Yeah, he said it was very popular and all it was yupster heaven. Yeah. So Back anyway, so we moved. I moved down there with the, my girlfriend at the time, mm -hmm. Xanthi. You may have remember. remember oh, that. I yeah, I liked her a lot. And it was just the most horrible experience of my life. I mean, the people down there. Yeah, you see, you don't live in in Miami, but my, people right. in Miami. They're really mean. They're uh, really mean. No, I've heard, yeah, yeah. heard that from other Floridians, but I don't know. Yeah, and when you're I, doing a talk show, you, it really comes out. You really see the evil of the people there. And they're really yeah. kind of nasty and mean and ugly. And, you know, it was just not a fun town to live in, except for the Cuban coffee. I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> well, then, and now you have to go over to JLo's to get that coffee. But yeah. the, yeah, I mean, you were being harassed too, weren't you, by someone on your station? Who well, that was behind. another story altogether. A guy who oh. was the most popular talk show host in Miami, bar none. Huh. I, can't, I can't even remember his name right now. It blanks Neil Rogers. It. Neil Rogers. Mm -hmm. uh, Neil Rogers, uh, he was, he somehow, I don't know, I guess maybe he was envious of me or something. But that he, but he Skip or felt it. threatened by me, and that he shouldn't yeah. have been. I was very, whenever I see him, I was very nice to him. I was very, uh, uh, you know, I, I paid obedi uh, obedience to him, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 because I realized he was the king of the town, and I didn't want to upset him. I just wanted to come in and do my little show. Yeah. So, but he just started putting me down and doing this and that on his show. Now, when you work on a radio station. Mm -hmm. Who do you make fun of? What radio personalities do you make fun of? Usually the people uh -huh. on other stations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? On other stations. And, you know, you put them down. Hey, he's not any good. He's an old man. You know, you can do that. But not somebody who's on the same station you're working on. No. I mean, I don't get that either. Because then what, like this happened to me. There was a guy in Jackson, Mississippi, where I went because it was the capital of Mississippi and I it's warm. And mm -hmm. so those are like two criteria for the job. Horrible thing. It was a it was a conservative far right station. And they had this Napoleonic morning man 
named Paul something who thought he was the bomb. And he wasn't. You take him out of the radio station and he had no personality whatsoever. Anyway, we digress. But while I was on the air, I this station had a policy. It wasn't mine, but I was the first one to enforce it, that if you are on call um, for how many, how many weekends a month, you get a comp day. And so I was taking my comp days. And he made on the air a comment like, what does she think? She's Johnny Carson. But it wasn't done in fun. It was done in, you know, yeah, kind of yeah. a snot. Well, anyway, this guy was really mean to me. Now, mm -hmm. one day I come in, he's on before I am, right? Just before okay. I am. And I walk in and um, he's there. And I, hi, Neil, you know, bowed to him, <laughs> got on my knees and bowed my head on the his, floor and, his, his, and, uh, and he said, boy, I feel crummy. I couldn't sleep last night and my arm is numb. And I said, if I were you, I would get yourself to a hospital, not after the show, right now. I said, sounds to me like you were having either a stroke or a heart attack or something like that. And that's not good. So no. he immediately, <laughs> on my bidding, he went rushed himself to a hospital. And sure enough, he had had a heart attack. Yeah, see, uh, those things, and yet everybody feels so foolish if they go to the hospital and it's not, well, not what, a heart what did attack. I do? What did I do, folks? I saved Neil Rogers' <laughs> life. That's what I did. Right. I saved the yeah. life of a man who did nothing but berate me. Did he acknowledge that? Like, Alex, you you know, you did no. me a solid. No, no. But okay. I saved his life. There's no question about it. Had he not gone to the hospital, this thing would not have gotten any better and he might have had the second heart attack and been dead. Eventually, a heart attack did fall him, befall him, I believe. Really? Years yeah, ago, years later. But it did. Because I've had times of intense chest pains, but how do you know when a heart attack is happening? Well, there are certain signs that you're having a heart attack. To begin with, maybe yeah. you're dead. That's that's one sign. Yeah, when you you know yeah. your pulse ceases. But if you're not pulse. dead, it's you know you're feeling chest pains. Your arm is going numb. Uh, if you're trying to sleep and you can't sleep, you know, yeah, things like that. There are there are a lot of signs of heart attacks. But he didn't know it. He didn't think it was a heart attack. He just thought it was like I couldn't sleep last night. My arm got mm -hmm. numb. Well, if it, I, my arm gets numb when I sleep on it sometimes, you know. <laughs> yes. But it doesn't go numb on its own. Um, so, you know, I mean, so, I mean, I saved this guy's life. Do you think he was any nicer to me when he got back? No, what he kept berating me uh, more and more. <laughs> yeah. I do think that insecurity makes people propels people into some of the worst decisions of their life. Well, they replaced me with this team. And this team mm -hmm. were on were guests a lot of times on uh, Neil's show. So they, once I left the station, they got my show. Mm -hmm. and, what was oh. the, and what was the first thing they started doing? They started putting me down and putting me down and putting me down. How long do you think this went on? Now, I'm, a, I'm in Miami for three months. How long do you think these two guys kept putting me down? And they kept getting back to me. Too long, Try obviously. four or five years. What, how? When you were gone? When you I was mean? gone. <laughs> See, I, became, no, I became literally the most hated person in the history of Miami radio. <laughs> well, it sounded like you had help with people, hitmen being hired to diss you. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that I do really think that when we're confused, when we're confounded, or we're feeling insecure, we make some of the worst decisions of our life. Like, you know, even parenting. I look back at some of the difficulties I had with my mother in my teens. Mm -hmm. And I realized Well, now, that's when you're going to have def difficulties with your parents. Anyway, the only time I ever tried to slug my father was when I was like 15. What was the incident? What was it over? I don't know. I was a kid. I, who yeah. knows? When you're that age, your brain is in an entirely Drawing. different yeah. place. I mean, the trouble is that at that age, most people don't remember because they get through it and then they go on with their life. But at that time in your life, when you're like 15, 14, 15, around there, 16, your body is going through so many different changes. 
Almost daily. But you can't keep yeah. count of them, and they're all very conflicting. And part of them is your is your ability at any kind of decency. I mean, kids at that age, what we should do is we should lock them in their room for like three years, and then let mm -hmm. them out when it's over with. You know, <laughs> that's do the smart, humane thing. But by that thinking, we'd probably like put women in their room for a week every month. So you know, I mean. <laughs> Oh, funny. But I still do like Slayton's line. <laughs> what other animal do you know of that bleeds through, through what is it, three it times? Bleeds for five days and lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the uh, I never had problems with, like, PMS or anything like that. Uh, but I did have one ovary. The good ovary with a little angel on its shoulder, yeah, and, then and the, the bad, bad ovary. So yeah. it, one month it was okay, just you go with the flow, as it were, and the right. next month, forget it. Don't get near Lori. Yeah, well, it was mainly the way I felt physically, because in one one ovary, it's like colors were brighter, food tasted better, <laughs> everything was more poignant, <laughs> and the other one, it was like life sucks. And I didn't feel good about life or myself. So, and I knew, I knew at a calendar, which whenever I make a big plan, you know, like go away for the weekend with somebody. Yeah. Let's see, is that on good over each month or bad over each month? Now, I, I, be, this is something I guess I can talk to you about. You're how old now again? I keep forgetting. You're 63. 63. So you mm -hmm. went through menopause already, right? Oh, yeah. In fact, I did early. I was in my early, late 30s. Late 30s. Really? Yeah. Because I didn't have any children. Well, you know what they say? People, if, if It depends on when your period first, you start first getting a period. So, uh, when I was 11 or 12. See, that's the reason why you went through menopause early is because you started menstruating early. Yeah. Some women don't start menstruating until like 15 sometimes, and they can keep going until they're 45 or so before me menopause hits. You have, you know, it's funny in the, in the history of your life, because I can say that now at 45, 54, how old am I? 84, that there's a, <laughs> a small window in which you can have kids. It's only about 20 years, 25 years. Yeah. You know, which yeah. seems like a long time at that point, but it's really not that long. Uh, so you no. really, uh, optimally, you should probably have a kid in your 30s, early 30s. That's yeah, optimum. I would, that's optimum. Mathematically, it, yeah. yeah, it makes. And I think sense. emotionally, you're ready for a kid too. Then you're not emotionally ready for a kid at 18. No, okay. gosh, no. See, I knew. From and you've never age. been emotionally ready for a no. kid. No, and I knew that. Rather than you know argue my way around it, I just knew. But did you ever I, get this from your parents? Like I got from my parents. When are you going to give me a grandchild? She knew because I had a younger sister ah, that took it. So she took, she took that job. Yeah, she did. And she that's a funny way to phrase it because it was almost like in the, you know. Yeah, well, I was an only child. I was an only child. And my mother always no, kept no, saying, no. when are you going to make me a grandmother? See, then that would be the real heat because you're the only hope. Yeah. And but I, no, my, yeah. she took the heat and she had a, a child when she was in her early 20s. So I would have been my late mid to late 20s. So I didn't have any pressure after that. Wow. She, she, she had the grandchild. She had, so she was happy. Yeah, yeah. Because I know that is a lot of pressure. For, that is a high-pressure situation for a lot of women who otherwise would not have had children. Mm -hmm. they, they were kind of either peer pressured or parentally pressured into it. Mm -hmm. And I just knew early on I wouldn't have children. It just... Tim, there's too much suicide in my family's side. Well, see, I, I didn't mind the idea of having a kid. It was just that I, had, the thing that bothered me was having a mother of the kid. <laughs> you know? You'd have to deal with her. Well, I mean, you know, I just felt that I, if, I, if I was, you know, I, I did have a kid when I was 18. And then she, she gave it up for adoption. Yeah, did you ever meet him? No. No, and I honestly believe he's Howard Stern. But that's another story altogether. Uh, anyway, but then that happened. Uh, I was shy on getting people pregnant after that. I was always very um, assiduous in asking uh, when I was just when we were about to have sex. Uh, do you have any kind of protection you're using? You're in the birth control pill. You got a diaphragm that the sperm can use as a trampoline. 
uh, uh, something. I would always say that. Well, if you don't, then I'll wear a condom or I'll would pull out before I Do come. Something. What? Yeah. Take some responsibility. Because I didn't yeah. want somebody who was a one night stand to be the mother of my child. Good on you. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, it became very paranoid of it, and then I suddenly realized, and it happened when I was doing the show in San Francisco. I hit about 45 or whatever. And I said, I haven't had any kids yet. And I said, I really like to have a kid. You know, I just, it's just, I spent my whole life being afraid of getting somebody pregnant and yeah. always being aware of that. I mean, I would ask women, what kind of birth control are you using? Mm -hmm. um, and if they said the pill, I go bingo. Or you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. good time. I can yep. I I can drop a load as many times as I want, and you ain't gonna get pregnant. <laughs> you see, know, you got a but, reservoir but, I, but that was that was very important to me. So at forty five, I suddenly realized I haven't had a kid because I've been so fearful of having one by somebody that I didn't trust. And I think there was a short time on the air where I was doing a thing about, I'm looking for a mother for my child. Anybody want to be the mother of my child? Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, to, to bear Alex Bennett's evil spawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I decided that was a stupid idea, you know. I mean, yeah. you know. They used to advertise uh, in the back of the SF Weekly or the Bay Guardian or one of those for eggs. This was when in vitro was mm. very new. Yeah. And... I thought about that. Can you buy a dozen yeah. of them at a time? <laughs> well, yeah, cheaper by the dozen. And I thought that, that I would volunteer to give somebody else an egg. That wouldn't bother me. But then I realized I had ethical issues with that, even just knowing that yeah. I, I I lodged a part. I just kept it all going. I, I, I wanted my geneal genealogical uh, influence or I wanted the, the buck to stop with me. I didn't. You didn't like I, what you didn't like who you were, so you didn't want somebody else to be like you. That's it. And the struggle with depression that I'd had, and there was so much suicide with my biological grandmother. Uh, her and two of her brothers that we knew of, and one brother who may have committed suicide. That is four kids in one family, but they weren't children. They were. I think one was a teenager. She was in her late twenties. My grandma. I have time to tell this story. Uh, it's not going to take a long time, but it, it, there, when we were doing the show in San Francisco, one day I get a phone call from a woman and says, hi, this is so-and-so. The yeah. girl's name I got pregnant was named Sandy. I won't say anything more, but her name was Sandy. And she said, uh, this is Sandy. You remember? We were friends in high school, and I'm going... Remember, we were friends in high school? <laughs> if you're the same one, I knocked you up. You know? Yeah, I mean, she was probably just being diplomatic about well, it. In and, case and, and, and she said, oh, yeah, and then we had our friend Phil. And she named all my friends and the people we knew together. So it kind of, she had to be Sandy. Yeah. She had to be. Yeah. So I'm going, jeez. You know, and then she sent me, I think she sent me a picture of herself and she had bloated out and didn't look anything like <laughs> She looked You're like sandy. she looked like somebody had taken a you know a, a, a air hose and pumped it up and you know put it up her ass or something. She didn't look like Olivia Newton John in Greece. Yeah, <laughs> but anyway, so I went. Um, Gee, that's fine. And she's, uh, but I didn't want to bring up the kid, and I didn't want to bring up the pregnancy because I didn't know number one if she in fact was the woman she was purporting to be, and secondly. Uh, if she was, I, I didn't want to bring up anything that might not sit well with her, make her yeah. feel comfortable, uncomfortable. One time I or said to her, her, I said, well, you know, I said, you, you really were a very major part of my life. And she says, well, I can't realize, I can't understand why, you know, and I'm going, mm. I, I don't know about this. And all of a sudden she starts talking about this kid she's got. And he's a boy. And she said, uh, yeah, he's uh, he's really depressed all the time, and she just starts yep. describing this kid to me, and uh -huh. I'm going, I bet she didn't give the kid up for adoption, or if she did, she took it back or something, because what she's yeah. describing is somebody who could be my kid. <laughs> but but did it never get to that point of conversation? And I kept trying to bring it up, you know, trying to make her come out and talk about the pregnancy, and she never 
did. And finally, wow. and finally, I just gave up on her and I didn't answer the calls anymore. You know, yeah, well, but, the, but I mean, that's the closest I've come to perhaps meeting my child. And, and Ben, you were taking a very unique position for uh, a teenage boy at that time. Oh, I wanted, the, I, I, well, first of all, I, I, I wanted to marry her. Uh-huh. Um, uh, but, um, that, not a good idea. That, well, it was getting too close, and that scared her off. Uh, uh -huh. And I was willing to—I was willing to adopt the child if she—if she wanted to give it away. I was willing to adopt it myself. But in that day and age, uh, guys just didn't have the right to go to court and ask for it. You know, right? It, it, pretty yeah. much, the right was the mother's to give it up or do whatever they want to with it. And I went to a do her doctor um, when she had the baby because I wanted to meet with him. And I said, can I meet with you? And he said, sure. So I went in, we talked about it. He said, well, you don't know if it was your child. I mean, she was having sex, I think, with other people as well at that time, which I didn't know. Uh, and um, she, she said it could be, it, she was, I think, a bit promiscuous. Could be any, it could, maybe it's not yours. What, what her, her Marjorie's cell phone is ringing. Uh, it stopped. I it hung up. You. It hung up. Anyway, um, uh, so uh, he was talking to me and so on. And then he said, "I have to, I have to go do something. I'll be back in a second. And he left, and he had the paper, the folder opened out in front of him of her and so on. And I'm able to read upside down. Yeah, I, 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 I can too. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a little radio. talent I yeah. have. It's a simple talent. Actually, it's not that difficult. Most people could do it if they tried, you know. And if you've dealt a lot with copy, you know, through your life. So I'm had. reading upside down, and I'm seeing um, sex of child, male. So I know she had a boy. Uh -huh. I didn't know, you know, whatever. So when she talked about this son of hers being depressed all the time, and uh, he's losing his hair a little bit, and blah, 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 and I'm going... <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> well, did you ever think? But I, I stopped talking to her. I just couldn't take it. If she wasn't going to say it to me, I wasn't going to bring, bring it, it up, up. You know, and yeah. and it might be that she wouldn't remember it because she had blanked it out of her mind. I don't know. I was just thinking because women had to do at that age. I mean, in that time, women had to do a whole spin story, and they had to stick with it throughout their life. Right. Because my, my grandmother, my not the one from the family of suicides, the other grandmother, she, uh, she I mean, she didn't, she kind of put it on the back burner. She had two children out of wedlock, and she was dating a guy when they were both in their 70s, and she didn't want him to find out. That's how stigmatized it was. Who was, what actor was it who found out eventually that his mother was actually his aunt? Uh, Jack Nicholson. Jack That's Nicholson. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It, that well, because that would happen a lot where they somebody would take the child and say it was theirs or adopt yeah. it and then yeah. raise it and the mother would be around all the time because she was playing the aunt. Yeah, it was kind of that old, um, who was Moses and the Bull Rushes thing you know, yeah. where that whole story. Yeah. Um, where, yeah, and so... Um, I can understand why she's just so uh, indoctrinated to go with this other story that didn't involve teenage pregnancy. Right. That she would, to this day, find it difficult to bring up with you. Yeah. I can see. And you, likewise, had an unusual approach as a teenage boy because the ones I've known, and I hadn't known many, um, were just kind of eager to solve this problem, eager to get it taken care of. Abortion was, has been illegal ever since I've been a sexual age you yeah. know um i didn't have the need for it because i was a late bloomer. is it illegal but now in, is it illegal now in florida i believe it is you know what what day is it um it, it just change it changes a lot here and then they go to the supreme court the supreme court rules one thing yeah i got an idea you moved to france why do you move to france because they just made a part of their constitution the right to abortion right and um, you know the abortion pill now is available in a lot of states. And in different flavors. <laughs> yeah. 
don't you just love that watermelon contraceptive? It tastes like a real thing. I want watermelon. I want raspberry. <laughs> Who's hogging the raspberry? She's such a slut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But hey, listen, that, you know. I'm, I just looked at the clock. Well, th- we should. Well, so line, shut the fuck up. up. Shut the fuck I, up. <laughs> yeah, that's what I where I was going with this. Maybe we should fight it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love her. It's, it's Lori Thompson. She was my morning wife. Yes. Yes, for many, and, many and, years. And enjoyed it to the end. See you next week, darling. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hmm. Okay, there's Lori. You know, and we have absolutely nobody waiting to come on the show. Huh? Is it that bad? Is that is the show this horrible tonight? What's happening? Nobody. Okay. I don't care. I'll say a couple of things, and then if uh, we don't see anybody uh, call on the show, uh, we're going to call it quits tonight. Okay. Because and then Laura, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'll have to then I have to let what's her name know that you know Amy know, uh, so that she doesn't wait for me to. Well, Charlie Wallace is here, so we'll we'll get to him in a second. Uh, well, let's let's get to him now because you know he's uh, he's a good guy and uh, he's always there for us. Okay, and we really appreciate it. So. Let me uh, do this, and there we see Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, doing pretty good. Uh, yep. Yep. So, so that's say for an old man. Uh, for an old man. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, here comes Brian Neary as well. Okay. If I beg them, they will come. Uh, anyway, uh, how are you doing? I'm kind of sad because it looks like it's gonna be cloudy and rainy on Monday. Oh well, you know it's rainy and it's rainy and windy here. In fact, I don't know if people can hear it, but right outside the window here, it's rattling the windows like crazy. Wow. You know. So anyway, oh look, there's a there's a father and his daughter. Mm-hmm. Huh? It's for H. H. What, were you, you doing her homework, helping her with the homework? No, I. Okay, okay. What the heck? Trying to sign on TikTok for her so she can do her hoochie dances. <laughs> <laughs> She'll wind up getting more, uh, more, more uh, uh, hits than I do. Yeah, right. What, what, are, you, <laughs> what are you trying to get? Are you trying to get her TikTok working? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I thought it was homework. I thought maybe I could age help. estimation. So that you put in your this is how they're fixing everything. You put in your age or you put in your birth date and then you stick your head in this frame and then there's and it says age estimation above it to yeah, verify it. to verify that you're not an eight year old trying to get on here. Ah. Oh, okay. First of all, I am an eight year old. Yeah, I mean, okay. But I was going to say, well, that guy's still old. Is she looking older this week? Uh, She's a week older. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Age confirmation, great. Now they, okay, get out. There you go. Now you go. Bye bye, Adrian. Nice seeing you. She made me buy her one of these $50 mugs. Oh, Oh, wow. Which mug? Get out. Why is it 50 bucks? Because it says this on it. What? Stanley. Stanley. Stan, who's Stanley? I have no idea, but it, it's a stupid, you know, a stupid thing where everybody buys one, so I got to have one? That's what it is. Yeah, Wait a yeah. minute, but it says Stanley. Yeah, Isn't that like a, 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 what do you call it, a power tool company or something? No, no. But this was the thing, you know, they had like the pink ones and people were in line like overnight to get one and it was, okay, can you get out of my office? It, it, it didn't work. I don't care. Oh, you have to care. No, I don't have you to have care. to care. You're her daddy. You have to care. Don't you okay, all agree? Well, I guess I got my new mug now. No. <laughs> okay, get out then. Or I, get a I bought that and said, no talk back. Get out. 50 bucks? Yeah. Is it really? I did. Yeah. 
those are the, no, all the rage nowadays. But why are they the rage? You're a goddamn cup. Am I missing don't something me. here? You know, Brian, I don't have to use my face ID for Pornhub like Ten you. Ten bucks. That works fine. Got in trouble a couple times. <laughs> I waited till she left before I said that. Yeah. Well, no, but but, but I don't. It's just yeah, it's just a stupid the fad right now, and her friends have had it for a long time. And I, she got another award at school, so I said okay. So. So you bought her a fifty dollar cup. Man, wow. which actually was forty nine eighty one or something. Even my baseball cup didn't cost fifty bucks. Hell, I remember uh, girlfriends I had who had cups that didn't cost them that much. Oh, wait a minute, but they were used for something else. Uh, there were uh, a couple of girls that had. Never. Yeah, yeah. Oh boy. So anyway, um, I've been sleeping all day because it's been raining and it's mm. been just. Yeah. Just it's gonna rain here out there. To, uh, tomorrow and Friday, I guess. Right so we've been watching calendar. this. Been watching this thing about the hist world history of the world since the in in invention of the atom bomb, and mm. how oh, nuclear boy. stuff has affected our politics and all of that. And it was really, it's really something. It's on, it's on uh, Netflix if you have a chance to watch it. It's really oh, terrific. The, and and they the start hell? bringing, one of the episodes, they start bringing up all the mistakes they almost had where they thought that nuclear weapons were coming in our direction and they almost retaliated. I mean, we almost obliterated the earth. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a fascinating, uh, fascinating, well, yeah, it might, might have saved us all a lot of trouble, huh? You know. yeah. What's it called? Yeah. yeah. What's it called? The trouble is, is he's kind of like a cockroach, and he would have survived. <clears throat> Who? Trump. Yes, so. Oh, here you go. Another Trump joke. Can't, bing, can't, bing, bing. can't go 15 minutes without a Trump joke. Okay? I didn't bring it up last time I was on the show. Oh, okay. Oh, good. What is that show called on Netflix? What? Uh, it's called, I can't remember now. I can't remember the name of it. It's, God, I can't it's, wait till it, I'm seventy. But it's, it's new, newly added. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I can go over. Let's see here. Net Netflix. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Netflix, and I go on uh, here and try to find it, and I'm sure I will find it. And I go sign in. Okay. There we go. It will sign me in. I sign in as Alex. Uh, and then, uh, let me see here. What's the, uh, huh. Well, they can't find it now. <laughs> Can you, oh, there it is. It's called The Turning Point. Ah, okay. The yeah. Turning Point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. See, I found it. Mm -hmm. And well, it's a movie or it's a series? It's a series. It's got, oh, really? Like <laughs> eight episodes, nine episodes, something like that. Really okay. a lot. Yeah. And, uh, I'm but it's, I'm it's very good. Very, very good. So anyway, excuse me, I gotta drink some coffee to wake me up. Uh, mm. It's okay, I got cream soda. I've been dozing all day. Cream soda, I always hated cream soda. It made me vomit. Wow. I'll send you some. My roommate found this brand called Teddy's, T-A-D-D-Y-S. And it's pretty good, I usually don't like cream soda. I hate cream soda. Just, I, I, I remember getting, literally getting nauseous drinking it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. It says natural and artificial flavor. I don't know what they make it. Well, I've got this one thing uh, I use, of course, I, I use nothing but this, and I think I should probably change. You know, it's time to change. It's time to go to smart water. But anyway, uh, yeah, like, uh, I use really, this is a really dumb water I'm using here. So, But uh, no, anyway, um, what happens is they have a peach, right? Which you would think is okay flavor. It's so so, right? But it leaves a scum at the top of the bottle. Mm. And then if I go in with my finger and I run it around the top of the bottle and take the stuff out, it's like this this orange goo. And and Marjorie said, Well, you know, that's that's coating your stomach now. Yeah. You know, so I'm thinking right in and say, oh, it's only with that flavor, by the way. Only with that flavor. The rest of them are just fine. Wow. You know? Are these all artificially flavored? I'm sure they are. You know, if they were, oh. if they were actually, I was going to say if it was natural flavor, well, it might have been. 
pulp of the peach. But, so this has zero sugar. So if it weren't naturally, if it were un, uh, naturally flavored, it would probably have some sugars in it. I would imagine. That would be my thought about it. So, you know. So uh, Charlie, let's see. What is it saying? I'm not. I'm into fitness. Fitness beer in my belly. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm trying to. Is fitness. <laughs> Beer in my belly. That doesn't exactly work. Yeah, it got a little apostrophe there. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, see, down there. I'm fitting this beer in my belly. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. All right. I didn't see the, the, that. Okay. Now, now I get it. Uh, oh, now it won't open. Oh, this one opens. Okay. It's going to open now. Uh, listen. All that goodness you're going to hear here. Oh, it didn't even go. Oh, well. Uh oh. What the hell? Mm. Anyway, so uh, what's been happening? Anything in the news? Anything we should know about? Anything we should care about? Trump today was told by the judge in the, uh, in the uh, uh, what do you call it, the Stormy Daniels case yeah, that he can't, uh, delay it. he can't delay it based on the fact that uh, he, he, he is calling for immunity. And they said, well, you should have asked for that like two, five months ago, but you're only yeah. using that as a stalling tactic now. Yep. So the trial shall go on as expected. You know. Well, I heard that the judge in the, uh, the uh, top secret document has put it off and put it off and is going, it looks like it's going to be after the election. She's a 2020 Trump appointee. Yeah. Why, would they, why would they seems like conflict of interest. Well, I would think that she would be very careful about this and try and be as uh, uh, legal about it all. But she, you know, she keeps stalling it, stalling it, stalling it. Fine. You know, he's already been found guilty here in New York once uh, in a civil case. And now this is not a civil case. This is a criminal case coming up with the Stormy Daniels thing. And that's going to happen. And I'm sure he'll be found guilty. I mean, I can't imagine he won't be. You know, of course, you know, it's a witch hunt. Everything's a witch hunt now. That's yeah. that's the newest thing. Pe people are claiming, I saw, who did I see the other day claiming it was a witch hunt? You know, uh, somebody. Uh, they're all using that excuse now. Oh, it's, it's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. Okay. Yeah. Which witch hunt? You know, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Um, can I say something here? And this is gonna this is gonna bother a lot of people, including probably Alan. But all my life, I've been very proud to be a Jew. Okay, I've never denied being a Jew, even when I had a, a group of kids in my neighborhood ready to beat me up because I was a Jew. You know, I never denied it in my life. And I never did anything but felt good about being a Jew because I liked what being a Jew was. Because the philosophy of being Jewish was one of hum humanity and humanism and being decent and being decent towards other people and caring about people who have less than you do. A lot of things like that. I think Jews, I felt being a Jew was being a mensch, being a good person. Well, after what's been going on in Gaza, I've come to the determination that I'm ashamed to be a Jew. And I'm ashamed to be a Jew because of what's going on in Gaza in my name. Okay? I mean, and the, the, the killing of these uh, people who were supplying food to, to the people in Gaza. Oh, it was, just, it was an accident. We're sorry. What? You know, you could have avoided that, and it showed that they actually knew where these th these three uh, trucks were and they, what they were and so on. It's a lie. They just keep lying, these fucking Israelis, and they're doing it in my name. And there are a lot of accidents. Awful, awful. awful aid workers. Yeah, awful lot, lot of accidents among aid workers, they decimated an entire hospital because they claimed that, of course, in, uh, under that hospital was, God, were, uh, was Hamas. 
Now, maybe they were and maybe they weren't, but you don't destroy the whole goddamn hospital, especially when it's the only one in the area that can do service to people who are being destroyed by you. And I'm supposed to be proud of being a Jew because that's being done in my name? Let's be honest about it. Um, I, don't, I don't see, I don't... Netanyahu has done more to create a element of anti-Semitism in this world than any single human being has. Uh, yeah. You know, that I, that I can remember. I would agree there. Yeah. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Um, I, I, so, you know, I'm just, I, I, I was, I'm just saying to Marjorie tonight, I said, I just, for the first time in my life, I'm ashamed to be a Jew, to have my name associated with that. Because it's just gotten so horrible. Why, you know? why would it bother me? I mean, other than I'm Jewish, it doesn't. Yeah, well, I'm I'll, not, I'll tell you, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not very religious. I'll tell you You're one thing I'm going to do. I'm not voting for Biden until hmm. Biden does something about that situation over there. Once again, he says, we're against you bombing those aid people, and we're against you going into this particular city and bombing it. And by the way, we're sending you more weapons. We're sending you more jets. Yep. Really, after he said Bomb. that, he said, we're also sending more jets and so on and so forth. Yeah. Why? What have they done to deserve it? We're all, we only become complicit in a, in a holocaust, basically. You know. So I'm not going to vote for Trump. I'm not going to vote for Biden until he does something to put the foot to the pedal and tell Netanyahu to fold it five ways and put it where the sun don't shine. Did they, did they, when we invaded Iraq, did they get as involved Israel and say, you should do this and you shouldn't do that? So why is it our responsibility to stop Israel from doing what they're doing? Well, Israel, you know, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's our responsibility to stop him. I'm saying it's our responsibility not to aid and abet him. Okay. I'll okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I'm and, not, and well, that's what I, you're doing when you're sending weapons. Yeah. You know. It's true. So, I mean, I'm just fed up, and I'm fed up with, with Biden not doing anything about it, not being proactive on this deal, and uh, I, I just won't vote for him. Uh, now you're saying, well, gee, do you want Trump to win? Listen, I'm in New York. Trump ain't going to win in New York, okay, mm -hmm. whether I go out to vote for Biden or not. But maybe one less vote for Biden will say to Biden, Hey, you know, you haven't gotten the confidence of people. And the latest, there's some latest polls out that people are incensed about his position on Israel. You know, uh, so I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not good. It's really it's it's <coughs> disgusting. So anyway, I saw that Tony was here, but and then I oh he there he here he comes, there he go, there he go. There he is. You didn't send him any coffee, did you, lately, uh, Alan? Okay. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, he's blocked on my phone right now. <laughs> oh, oh, re uh, oh, really? Yeah, Why is he blocked on your phone? A simple, simple request. I've had to say this over and over again. Wait. Don't text me or call me before 2 o'clock my time, 5 o'clock your time. And he just blows through it all the time. <laughs> so uh, last time he said, oh, it was only 15 minutes early. Wait, wait. Can, can I, I say one? one? So can I I just, one? I'll block you, and when I want to talk to you or you want to talk to me, you can unblock me. But I mean, technically, Alex, he can I say on my defense, I get up, I get up, I get up early, Alex. So I, my brother leaves to work for the city. I would say like six o'clock, a quarter to six, the call comes. So I get up right around that time to eat breakfast early. I'm an early rise and listen to the news. So I actually have my phone on the kitchen table. So I shoot him an email. But since he's three hours behind, how does that count? What do you mean, how does it count? Because he's like three o'clock his time. <laughs> he's up all night like, like, like Lugosi, Alex. He's uh, Tony, Tony, did he say don't text me a text before that time? Because I know you text like 30 texts in a row. But I would think, no, you're up at two in the morning, I thought, because you texted me already. Tony, I, he told right? you not to send him texts at that time of the morning, didn't he? He takes oh. me more time no, at no, four no. o'clock. You, 
you're you're mixing things up in the afternoon, not until. Oh, 2 okay, in the afternoon. afternoon. I'm sorry. It was like four not, o'clock. Not until okay. two. No, at, at two in, in the a.m. Yeah, I'm I'm wide awake. Oh, that's what I was saying. Yeah, because I got already oh. got. Oh, I did. All right, that was a four thirty text. Once I didn't in really a while, Tony, why, why don't you just not ever me. text him again? Okay. Tony, don't, don't, here, don't ever text him again. <laughs> send him voice. Send him voice messages. Those are much better. I haven't bothered you in a while, Brian. <laughs> I, I never said bothered. I you, like him. You know, I said, you, oh, can you tell where this guy's from? He said, this fucking douche. <laughs> oh, 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 you know what? You know, I get you know so what you're pissed. doing? You're I, doing it to me too, Tony. Because I, I've told you, you know, and yeah. I, and I've allowed you, yeah. to come back on and be able well, to look at what's going on and participate on the Facebook page, but. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to post anything. Oh, I thought you'd like to see that news on Trump. I'll no, I don't care. I don't right. care. Because all I do is post stuff there so that people can watch the shows or know that I'm doing a show at a certain time or maybe I'm not doing it tonight. And then you go in with some big thing and you obliterate everything below it. <laughs> I, I won't link you. I thought you might have found that interesting. That's why I just put it there. Tony, you can call me anytime, buddy. Thank you, Brian. Really, Brian? Are you telling him that? I yeah, think, because I turn yeah. my phone off when I go to sleep. Maybe, so I don't hear all this stuff. <laughs> he yeah, he called me you, early in the morning. You, you wake, he knows I'm driving. But you wake, he knows I'm driving the load. I, you wake up in the and morning and there are 20, 20 fucking texts on your phone. I know. And Adrian looks at it and says, Daddy, this guy's texting you over and over. Is it Maybe it's important. I said, no, it's not important. No, it's not. No. <laughs> I, good, Brian. I haven't got you in a while. I figured I'd put you on rest a little bit. I know. I was going to bring it up, but I, I want to be nice tonight. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I, uh, usually, when I, I, don't worry, Tony. I'll unblock you. you usually, day. when I've been fed up with Tony, I just write one word: stop. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, get it. like my father would do that. Like he would just pick up and say, enough of this nonsense, Nancy. <laughs> she used to blame him. He you used to call, he used to call, your father called you Nancy. No, my mom was Nancy, so she used to. He used to, I used to break his chops. Everybody knew her as Nancy. Yeah, <laughs> Shecky met my mom and dad. Did he? He was like. Your son is nice. My mother says he bothers Are you. Are we now it? talking about dead people? Well, I still talk about my mom and check you all the time when I go to the thing. I, you know, I talk out loud when I'm home sometimes. Like when, you, when I was watching an old show. Why I would think you want like, to talk to Shecky? He never wanted to talk to you. Oh, no, he liked me. He said you liked me too, but he said, don't bother Alex. <laughs> we used to say that, yeah. He, was, he had some funny stories with you. We used to just talk like a general, you know. He says he likes you, but don't tell him I told you that. So I won't say nothing. <laughs> I like you? He said that one time. Maybe he was joking with me. I didn't know when he was joking. He was lying he said, through his teeth. I don't like you. I don't know. <laughs> I've never liked you. I <laughs> He said, don't tell him I told you. That's what I'm going to say. He doesn't even want me to post on his page. I know. People are tuning in right now. I'm wondering what the hell this <laughs> yeah. is all about. Exactly, yeah. Alex, I got to say, I'm proud of you. I agree with you on Netanyahu. I, don't vote for either one of them. Well, you can't vote for I'm Trump. not going to vote for Netanyahu. No, but the other guy, too. I mean, Biden? he says one thing, and he's dumping the shit over there, too. Well, you know. Tony's not even Jewish, and he's upset. Well, no, I, I like Jewish food. Though. I have Jewish friends. But I think you're right about that. I'm if you don't like it, you, you don't, don't call it Id food. That's true. I got. I got to get some knishes in. That's what I got to do. Oh, really? I got to go to Yonah Shimon. Well, that gets on my good side that you like knishes. I love knishes. I used to go to the city just for my mom. You go to Yonah Shimmels? Yep. I used to take the really? train. Really? Yes. I used to take the train. To, my brother used to drive me off of Woodside. I told this to Shaky. Take the train in. Then when I came back with the knishes she wanted, I called her. Jumped on a train. Then he would pick me up at Woodside 61st. Street. I'm back. And we used to go home and throw him in the oven. <laughs> You know, Tony, if you really were a friend of Alex's, you'd drop off some of those at his you house. Know. <laughs> I'll, I'll Alex, oh, yeah. home. You're getting in trouble, Alan. Yeah, you're going to get him in trouble, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why is it getting him in trouble if you drop off to I may not leave. But let's watch another movie. Get him out of here already. <laughs> but, you know, Marjorie and I are getting to that point in our lives where we're going to need somebody to take care of us. Hey, I'll do it for free. No, that's a very you, that's a very nice thought that you have. That really you would, would do, do it, it for free. Help you? But I don't even want you around me for free. Okay. Even for now, I bring I take it. I like taking care of people. It makes me feel good actually. Yeah. I just uh 
Yeah, we, we, we're, 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 we're thinking about getting people to like, if we go to Europe, to drive us around and do all that kind of stuff, you know. Well, that's kind of be a lot, right? What? When you go, have you ever been to Europe, Alex, overseas there? Yes. Did you, you went to the Olympics, that's right. Was that when? Uh, I've been there, I can't tell you how many times I've been to Europe. The only time I left the country was Canada, that's it. Well, they don't want you to go. I know, I mean, we didn't even need a passport at the time in like the early 80s. They just yeah, yeah. stopped yep. the car going oh, through. You can tell he's had coffee, can't you? I had a couple. Can't I was you? watching Road You had a couple? <laughs> a couple? Right. I have a cup here, and maybe I, I will I drink half cups. of it. Maybe I will drink half of it. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, I'll be a couple, quiet. A couple of cups? I know. That's my vice is coffee. You know? I, I don't need to send him coffee. He's always high on coffee, you know? Yeah. Hey, Kevin, how you doing? Good, how are you? I saw I saw some videos you posted recently. You still going out to the oh, school from last week? Yeah, you you're still going out to the schools and doing this stuff for them, right? <clears throat> yeah, I did it for them last well the week before I left. And what do you shoot yeah. those with? A uh, iPhone? iPad, yeah. iPad, okay. Yeah, because um, um, I was uh, I was just looking on online. I found this one woman. She's got these uh, golden retrievers. Oh, which? Oh, okay. What? No, I I, I kind of golden retrievers, and you like had a because well, Honda Ray retrievers is. I tell you why, because in my midst of maybe adopting a puppy, uh, I was recommended somebody in Idaho for retrievers. Pondera uh, retrievers, ladies, really like. Well, anyway, between, anyway, I, shut, I know, up, shut exactly. up, shut up. Anyway, so there's this woman, and she's got these about three golden retrievers, uh -huh. and they, I don't know if she's got them trained or something, but she does things like uh, we're testing out different foods on the dogs and things like that, and you'd think, okay, so you put that up on YouTube, maybe you, maybe you get a thousand people watching it. The one I was just watching before I came in here tonight she had 30,000 views, 30 million views, excuse me, 30 million views. Do you know how much money she made off 30 million views? I, I added it up. She made $120,000 on one video. I do my job. I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> and I'm lucky if I get $100 every six months. You know, it's ridiculous, you know. Um, why? I mean, the dogs are funny, you yeah, know. Cute, yeah. But I mean, th really? Are you kidding well, me? I saw one with the with the it was a retriever, and the little infant was like three years old, wrapping a blanket around it. And he's just sitting there, like all still, letting the baby do it. And then yeah, the kids something like that will get a million views or two it's million. It's so cute. I was getting all emotional views. watching it. I was like, oh, that's so cute. You know. And the dog was like like a statue. Like it was so timid. I was sitting in here. I've been in show business all my life. I'm lucky if I get <laughs> yeah. 30 views. You know, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, anyway. Um, but anyway, so um, uh, that was my night tonight before I came on. So I looked at it. I said, 30 million views? Come on. It's a dog licking his balls, you know? Oh, lucky thing. Yeah. 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 It'd be nice to be able to do Well, it's your old joke about a guy sees a dog <laughs> licking his balls, and he says to his friend, I wish I could do that. And he said, well, maybe if you give him some flowers, you can. <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway. So anyway, we were depressing ourselves with the atom bomb today. It got to the point where Marjorie and I had to turn the thing off because we were getting so loopy. We were like into the, into the sixth or seventh episode. And uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, anybody seen any good movies lately? Or I watched Roadhouse. It was okay. That was but... pretty good. It I liked it with it the Jake bad. Gyllenhaal, right? I just saw it just before I got off the. It, it, it wasn't it bad. Was... It wasn't bad. You know. No, I liked it. I didn't know that. Was... I thought I thought he was pretty good in it. I like him in the movies, so it was pretty good. I thought. Yeah. It got 50 million views. I heard on Amazon. They saw, it, like, in the last two See, weeks. See, and I something. can't get 33. Okay. I mean, they, yeah. They signed him to a three picture deal, Alex and Amazon, after this roadhouse. I don't know mm -hmm. what he got though, but it had to be good. Well, I don't know. I don't know what he, whatever he wants to get. If they really want him, yeah. he just char charges them a whole mess of money. You know. Yeah, I, I kind of like, you know what? I don't miss going to the movies now. 
as much. Oh, I, like I, won't, I won't even go to a movie theater now. Anybody go to a movie theater lately? You know, it's just it's just ridiculous. There's no reason to. Why? It's so much to begin with. Only. You would have thought that when they went through that period of of a fallow period with uh, uh, COVID, okay, that they would have uh, cleaned up these theaters, gotten them all spiffy, so when people came back to them, they would look good. I went back to a movie theater, was pretty grungy before we left it. It was twice as grungy when we came back. They didn't do anything. And they expect us to show up at movie theaters in great numbers? What are they doing to drag us, you know, drag us in? So that's that's about it. That's how I'm <clears throat> how I'm rolling on that one. But I mean, I just I why do I want to go to a movie theater? You know, we went and saw Oppenheimer. That was about it. That's the last time yeah, I've been to a movie I, theater. So too. Yeah. And I didn't uh, you know, it was a Pay more than nine dollars. Amazon had them on sale this last weekend. Oh, you got it. I gotta watch it again. The DVD. No, that was a good movie. Is it, is it down Actually, to nine do uh, is that is that like a, is that a Blu ray? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. So uh I don't know why. I figured that there would be a, a some copy. Why are you buying DVDs? Well, I don't know. Why? Uh, what because a, a it's hard to watch a movie. I, you know, I could watch a movie like that on Prime for twenty dollars. It just won all the Academy Awards. I got right? I got news for you. There, th that movie, for instance, is available on several of the streaming services. Yeah, Peacock right. got it. I got Peacock. Peacock has it, and I think somebody I else has it, it too. I mean, yeah. You know, if you want to belong to either one of those, or just you know. That would that be a one-time watch for like nineteen dollars? This is I can watch it all I want. Yeah, how many times are you gonna watch uh, Oppenheimer? I don't know. A few, maybe. I, I, he was a genius. <laughs> oh God! I, yeah, he was, I'm gonna watch it a few times because he was a genius. Well, <laughs> I, I happen to I, I happen to like it. I, anyhow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was it was a good picture. Yeah, I liked it. Did you? I or, it. Did you? But go, I like Christopher did, Nolan as a director too. I like everything he does. You like everything he does? Did you see Tenet? Did you see Tenet? I, I didn't see Dun, uh, Dunkirk yet. I have to see Dunkirk that was fine. Did have you seen Tenet? No, I didn't see that. Terrible good. movie. Really? Okay. What was that one where the whole world turns upside down? Terrible movie. I liked Inception. I thought Inception, that was a terrible movie. You didn't like it. Remember at the end, it's spinning. I mean, come on. I mean, I didn't like how he ended it. Yeah, you're right about that. It's like it kept going. I liked his first two Batman films. I thought they were terrific. Yeah. What'd you yeah. think of the last one? Did you like it? No. I mean, no. No. See, that really wasn't Robin. I didn't like how Joseph, well, they were trying to say that he was going to be the new Batman. He was supposed to be Robin. He wasn't, though, really. He wasn't Dick Grayson. I didn't, I even, I didn't like how he, eh. What is wrong with you? I just didn't like the way he kind of incorporated what, what it. What is wrong with you? I, I just didn't like the way he did that. You're one of the we strangest did. people I've ever known, Tony. <laughs> really? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a terrible thing. <laughs> Tony, do you, buy any, do, you buy any Trump, do you buy any Trump Bibles to go with your comics? Yeah. Yeah. No way. Actually, I you, tell should you, have thing, those. you should have bought them by comics. You could, you could be selling those for double by now. I had to sell I, I, a have, have you seen the ad he did for those Bibles? I mean, it's hilarious, you know. Come on. I keep a, I keep quite a I keep a, quite a few Bibles around the house. Yeah, really. That that in the news is the only thing funny on SNL. The funny thing is it has yeah. not only the Bible in it, but the Constitution, the Constitution. and the Bill of Rights, which by mm. the way is part of the Constitution. He doesn't seem yeah. to know that. Um and um uh, he, um, um, you know, is is ha has all those in one Bible, and all three things he's never read all the way through. Okay, I don't think he's ever read one word out of the Bible. I don't think he's read a page, and I don't think he's read. I don't think he's ever read the Constitution. If you want my opinion, he, 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 got, the, he, too. he got the video portion, uh, the Bible on tape. The Bible. So he got an audio book like Phil would do. For Alan. Audio book. That's what I was thinking <laughs> if, of. Yeah. If I was the printer, I would have printed the the cover upside down. That would have been hilarious. 
He held it upside down. Remember that? Well, he didn't do the Bible. It actually was done by somebody else, done by some the guy who did, does that song. Greenwood. Yeah, Lee Greenwood. Greenwood. Yeah, who does Another that reason why country music sucks. Well, he's a good example of why it can suck. There are other people that show why it doesn't have to suck. But I'm not buying Beyonce as a country artist. I'm sorry. Mm. You know, so. Okay. Is he going to raise at work to, or something? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. I bet Charlie disagrees with me. I like Beyonce. Well, I like Beyonce, too, but not as a country artist. Why not? I thought, Songs you know what I thought she was great at? She was great playing Etta James in Cadillac uh, Records. Did you ever see it? No. I think, oh, yeah, I saw that. That was with Adrian Brody. Etta, Etta James. That's where she sang at last. I didn't know that was on. Oh, okay. Yeah, she sang it last in that, and then she sang it at the uh, inauguration uh, ball for yeah. for um, um, Michelle and Barack. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not saying that Beyonce isn't terrific. I just don't buy her as a country artist, you know. Well, oh. Hootie and the Bullfish went, moved over the country. Mm. Really? I, don't, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's why. Uh, didn't that uh, John Stewart? John Stewart made a comment about well, that. Well, I haven't been for Hootie since... Uh, I haven't liked Hootie since he attacked those ships in the Suez Canal. Um, so, yeah. Don't get that one. Huh? You don't get, you don't get it? The Hooties? No. Don't you know who the Hooties are? Yeah. Hooties. I know the Hooters. Oh, that was Well, Hooters. that's a different thing altogether. But Hootie... Hootie the Hooties... The hoot, hoot, are they Hooties? Hooties. It's pronounced Hooties. Uh, Hooties. Hooties. Hoothies. H-O-U-T-H-I-D. Hoothies. Hoothies. Yeah, they, they uh, attack ships in the They're bombing our ships. Canal and stuff in the Gulf of Arabia. And all. Yeah. yeah. Gulf of Arabia. You meant the Gulf of Aden? Whatever. Okay. No, the Suez Canal is where they were attacking. Oh, yeah. They were attacking oh. ships that they said were sympathetic to Israel. Okay. Now some of the ships in the Mississippi might be sympathetic to Israel. Why don't they bomb them too? Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, 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 would, you, would you diagram that joke for us so we can understand? <laughs> no, it? everybody but you got it. So it makes I didn't sense. Even know it was a joke. <laughs> I don't know. Phil, Phil is right about you, Alex. You have no sense of humor. Phil, <laughs> Phil says I have no sense of humor? Yes. Just, Jesus. Maybe it's because I never find him funny. Yeah. <laughs> that could be That's a, funny. a good reason. And only about one in ten of my jokes you find funny, so there you go. Oh, not no, one. only one of ten jokes that we understand. Yeah, I, I didn't even know it was a joke. And we can see if it's funny or not, but we can't even understand it first. So. Right. But, you know, I would, I would ask, I'd ask Brian if he had coffee tonight. He's been talking a lot tonight. No. Normally he's quiet and sitting there and composed and everything but boy he's been going on and on tonight it's kind of, it's nice brian turn to multicast <laughs> i'll leave you a message tomorrow brian oh please tony i'm on the way to lodi uh 6 a.m in 6 70 away. parts in okay i'm trying to think of something good to say you get up that early huh get up at 5 30 all my life oh boy well, that's like high school. What, what time do you high get? School, I was working what? at Hill Packard. I was getting up early to drive down there. Crazy. What uh -huh. time do you hit the sack? Uh, like nine thirty or ten. Nine thirty wow. or ten. So you you get an eight hour sleep, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What time like, does the sun come up then? About Brian, when you're on the road, then pretty much. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's coming up like right in my face. Drive right into it. Yeah. yeah. Well, on uh, let's see, on, on Tuesday the sun is going to come up at about uh, here at about six o'clock in the morning, or maybe 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 a little later, maybe a little later, about about uh, seven, and then it will go back down at two fifteen in the afternoon. Tuesday, yeah. Do you have a view of a sunset or sunrise out your windows, Alex? Yes. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Why 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 is that on Tuesday? If you're talking about the eclipse, that's oh, on yeah, Monday. The eclipse. Oh, that's oh, right. there. The it's Tuesday. That's on Monday. It's on Monday, is it the 8th. On, is that on Monday? 
April. Yeah, I'm glad through. you told me. I might have missed it. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're panicking, right? They they had stuff. People panicking at uh, Niagara Falls because they say that's like going to be like the path there. Yeah. And they're saying, oh, there's going to be so many tourists coming here and the traffic and all this stuff. They're like panicking about it. Monte, it's true. The last one got pretty stupid. And yeah. I mean, there was places out in uh, Oregon. In what, well, Marjorie went out and got the glasses. And I, <laughs> I, I don't know if we can see it from our window because the sun might be a little bit more to the side. So what we're going to have to do is probably go outside and look at it. So, you know, or we could go up on the roof, but I'm afraid yeah. of going up on that roof. You know, so whatever. Is there like, uh, is it like, are you able to go on the roof? I mean, is it like a, is it like a patio out there? Or no, no, like no, no. This is like, uh, you don't want to go too close to the edge. Okay. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Yeah. Don't go to the roof. No, yeah, you know me no, up no, there please. The no. You know, and then I'm always afraid I'll get locked up there or something, you know, so. Yeah, they always have those movies when they go in the buildings up there. They put the wood there, and all of a sudden it's gone. And yeah. So Marjorie and I went out last uh, last week. Uh, I think it was was a Thursday. Yeah, and we got our our uh, shingle shots. Try saying that three times fast. Well, you got the shingle shots. Our shingle mm -hmm. shots. And he said you might have a few little problems from this. Marjorie mm -hmm. was sick as a dog. Oh, from poor baby. and they say the second one is worse. Yeah, they, it's multiple shots, right? Yeah, it's multiple it. shots. Yeah, yeah. That's quick. So that's me. good that you got that. Though. Well, they may be quick, but they they they, they, they last for three four days. She had that. No, she I just had, tired. I had mine in twenty twenty. I had no reaction. I had, I had a very. I had hardly reaction. any reaction at all. She but her, she had a pretty bad reaction. Sorry to hear that. She she had oh, a bad yeah. reaction to the uh, to the uh, COVID shot. I was tired after the COVID shot, Alex. One time, like I was like washed out. You, you know, you should, you can get tired from these various vaccines and so on. Um, I'm just getting every vaccine I can possibly do to piss off JFK Jr. <laughs> <laughs> and send him a picture of your vaccine. Now that that there's there's the presidential <laughs> run we're not talking about. We haven't no. talked about him, have we? No. Well. Doesn't deserve any talk. It doesn't really. No. And you know, the man's insane. Yep. I mean, uh, Even his whole family backs Biden. Yeah. That was well, you know, you can be against vaccinations for yourself. If you don't want vaccinations, you're afraid for yourself personally, fine. But if you're telling people don't get like the COVID vaccination and then people don't, they could die from that. Yeah. They could die from listening to you and your right. half-ass theories. Now watch, I just mentioned that, and I'll be demonetized by, you know. Well, but, but it's 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 also selfish because you can you can get you can get a mild case. You could walk home and, and be home with your grandparents or something, and one of them, which has a higher chance of dying, even if they're vaccinated. Well, somebody said that you know the reason, like for instance, we wear masks, mm. isn't for ourselves. We wear masks for other people. So That's if we correct. have it, we don't give it to them. That's correct. So if we all wore masks, we probably would uh, would have cut the uh, the incidence of COVID down uh, completely. But we didn't. And a lot of people, well, I'm not going to wear a mask. And, you know. A lot of Trump supporters didn't because he said you didn't when he was out campaigning. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. how many people died as a result of the advice that Trump gave? Yeah. I mean, there's no way to put a, a number on it but you know so I mean it's just very selfish and coming from people who know nothing about science that's the part that really bothers me um, today I saw that um, there were 250 musicians who have all signed a petition about AI hmm. because it's going to ruin the music business mm -hmm. and I'm going do they know the science behind AI? Do they have any idea of what it's capable of and not capable of? And, uh, you know, I mean, they're worried that, you know, people are going to be recording uh, their voice, singing songs they didn't write, you know, and them not getting money for it and so on and so forth. And I'm thinking to myself, really? Don't you have better things to worry about at this point in your life? 
everybody's saying, oh, you know, AI is going to be either the savior of the world or it's going to take us to ruin. What do you think, uh, t um, uh, Charlie? Your take on AI? Well, AI can only do what we program it to do, so until it starts teaching itself. Yeah, and and how how much is it going to be able to teach itself in the near future? In the near future, not much, but 20, 30 years from now. I mean, do you think there's the a point at which computers could take the computers with AI could take over the world? Uh, or is that just? Yeah. No, no, Dave, we can't do that right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I watched all the Terminator movies. Of course they could. Well, no, but the thing is that, you know, everybody ever saw uh, Forbin, the Colossus Project, yeah. or uh, the, the Colossus, the Forbin Project, yeah. has this idea that, oh, one day a computer will run the world, you know. And yeah, if you watch science fiction, certainly a science fiction writer can make that kind of world very awake and alive, you know. It doesn't mean it's ever going to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, but haven't haven't they said like what the, what did the technology you know the technology boom it folded so many times in these last like ten years right? What's what's the paradigm on that, uh, Charlie? How many how many how much advance and how many years does it get? But does well, it it double itself or triple itself or double whatever? Itself like every year. <laughs> Yeah, but I think like yet lately, I mean, they showed like the the last ten years of technology. You know, they're saying some huge numbers, and so there's, how technology there's a, is just doubling and doubling and doubling, and it can be really fast for some of these things to happen. Yeah. Well, they had a thing on TV. I saw this morning at you know one of the articles on one of those shows that showed that AI is really in its infant stages yeah. in the first place because. They're going out and people are putting in things like, show me a picture of poverty and it brings up all black people. Yeah. Or show me a picture of an engineer and it brings up a whole, a whole bunch of white people. And that's it. It doesn't show any kind of uh, <clears throat> race discrepancy, you know, dis diversity or anything like that. And, and but if you, if you tell it's it only to... taking that, it's only yeah. taking that off the internet from what it's learned. Well, they did what it's show learning. the way they did show where in trying to be diverse, they trained uh, AI to be diverse over at Microsoft or something. And then when you said show me a picture of Abraham Lincoln, he was black. Or not Abraham, mm -hmm. yeah, or George yeah, Washington. Yeah, still he was black. screwed up. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I, and and but that but, uh, it has to learn more. Donald Trump it has Jr. To continue was to learn showing that, that is how horrible AI was going to be and how it's going to wipe out well, white it's, people. It's still learning, and it's the Wild West right now. And, yes. and until it learns that there are white people yeah. that are that are you know poor, and that black people get very well, you know, they're very well off too. You know, until it learns both, yeah, you'll have to say, show me the picture of a rich black man or something like that, right? You know, and then it will start learning that. But right now, it's all screwed up because they're saying that the kids are going in and using it, mm -hmm. and they're bringing up all this stuff. And now they're they're getting in their minds that only black people are poor, and only white people can compute. You know, uh, program computers, and there's no other you know Indians or anything well, like that. Well, how have we that learned that we really shouldn't rely on computers except to do our taxes? Uh, uh, Alan, Even that, <laughs> Alan. All right, sir. Um, so in electronics, uh, you know, if you go for an electrical engineering degree, they teach you what's called Moore's Law. Yeah, that's and it. it. It's named after Gordon Moore, and he said that computing power will double every 24 months. Will double? So, when did he say that? Uh, 19. Uh, he was one of the co-founders of Intel, so whenever Intel was formed. Yeah, but that that's that's been blown out of the water. Yeah, this I think that, that seems power. This is not a AI. No, I'm saying computing power. Everything is just gone crazy. Mm. Okay. No, I mean it does. It has it has changed. Listen, we'll in call my it Neary's they, law. We'll start teaching that in school. In now. my lifetime, I remember right. seeing uh, the computer of the time, which was the uh, uh, I, what was it? Was it the IBM? Uh, who? No, it wasn't IBM. It was. Um, Rand Corporation had a thing called Univac, right? Yeah. And they said, by the time your children grow up, and this would make it like 50 years, 60 years in the future, one of these will be on every 
table in, in every desk in America. And, and they are. They and they are. IPhone. And they are. You know, I mean, but when I think about what we had for technology when I was born, and as I grew up in, you know, in my teens, compared to what we have now, I never would have expected it to go this far, you know? I, I mean, I knew it was, I had a whole reverie for the future. Mm. I swooned when I thought about the future. I watched everything that did talked about the future and what the future was going to be like, but I never imagined it would be this far, yeah, you know? You were probably one of the first people in your neighborhood that had a light bulb. <laughs> Never mind. But when I was in college in the seventies, the computer that I learned. Yeah, and I stuck it. Your, I stuck it in your mouth to light it up. <laughs> anyway, say, there you go. Yeah. What we what we that I learned the program on was the size of the Pentagon. I mean, it was gigantic. Oh yeah. It was a whole building. And it didn't even have half the computing power of this phone. The phone, the the computer that I first bought was an IBM. Oh, you got the IBM okay. with two, get them two five and a half inch hard uh, floppy yeah. disk drives. Yeah. Yes, my brother told me. I was I was living large, and then yeah. Gary, my business manager, and I went out and we bought a hard disk drive that we installed in one of those bays, which cost us three hundred dollars. And was twenty gigabytes. Oh my god! Or megabytes, twenty megabytes, megabytes. 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 megabytes, twenty megabytes. We were living large, man. It went on this hard drive. I didn't have to stick the thing in, you know. The first version of Photoshop I got came on the three and a half inch floppies, and they were numbered, and they were like sixty of them. You had to stick them one after the other. <laughs> Remember those? How long, how they long held like 144k on each disc. Yeah. <laughs> how long ago was that? Uh, I don't know. Well, there was a thing that I had that I used called the video. 20, 30 years back ago. in the day. The video toaster, which was invented by some friends of mine, uh, out in, um, <clears throat> out in, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, what, was it? what was the town? I used to be, Topeka, Kansas. Oh. And uh, that you would get it, and then in order to install it on your Amiga, they sent you. It was literally forty discs, oh and God. you had to put them in one at a time. It took me, you know, half a day to do it and load them all in. But then it would work, you know. It was fine. But all you had to do is have one of those discs be bad. Yeah, <laughs> and you were <laughs> fucked. Absolutely <laughs> fucked. But I mean, to think that what I had as a computer sitting on my desk with that IBM years ago, compared to this. Oh, that's much more powerful. Than it was that, more I mean. powerful than all the computers that we had going to the moon. Yeah, NASA. It's amazing. Killed to have this kind of power. Yeah, yeah. Crash. You know, I mean, it it it's just amazing what Apple did with this. I mean, they, yeah, they that, really. That was the last great product I think we had. Well, I product. think if we look back at history and we say, okay, what revolutionized the world? I would say this did a lot to revolution. I think you're right about that. Yeah, you know. Uh, the fact you look around, everybody has one. I mean, it's so innovative, and they all you use it for sell them to people in Queens. They don't mm -hmm. use them to learn anything. No, they don't use them to to be able to do good stuff with them. Anything. Uh, the trouble is with technology. I've learned, and I don't mm -hmm. know what the what the uh, uh, what the algorithm is on this one. Is that given any technology that we invent now, we will find a way to misuse it, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 that's the problem. What do we use to, uh, the computers for now? We have everything we can do with these things. What do we come up with? Robocalls. Yeah. You know? Criminal criminal enterprises. Awesome. Criminal enterprises. Yeah. People are being ripped off like crazy because of the use of computers. No. Nope. Um, I, you know, it, it's just amazing to me. Just amazing to me. And yeah, but would you like to go back and do a time where we didn't have a computer or an iPhone? I could, you know something? I, I was thinking about it, and I grew yeah. up in my teens with no computers. Okay? So no I, computers. Nothing even... Uh, the best thing, that, the most technologically advanced thing that we had was a TV set. And uh, I'm telling you, I don't know that my life wasn't better for it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know how my life has improved. Uh, certainly, my life has improved in one important way. Years ago, when I was working here in New York, I used mm-hmm. to do an overnight show. And when I got my paycheck, I would pay, I would be in my box at the radio station, and then I'd have to wait till ten in the morning for the bank to open up before I could deposit it. Wow. Yeah. The fact yeah. that I can now deposit that check anytime, yes. and I don't even have to go mm-hmm. to the bank to do it because I can do it from home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is, yeah. You know, is a godsend, an absolute godsend. So, a lot of a lot of kids right now, in the past ten years have grown up with iPads and tablets and things that we never had as Yeah, but they're using them all for the wrong stuff. What are they doing? TikTok, Instagram. (laughs) Marjorie's on Instagram all the time. I look over and she's always flipping through the thing like crazy. I'm I'm wondering about this. I I said, you know, you're going to become a moron if you keep on doing that. I said, but then again, you're too late to become a moron. You are one already. And we then have a big fight and we don't (laughs) talk to each other for the rest of the day. What? I was going to... I'm oh, sorry, Tony. Tony, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I remember when I was a kid, when I used to go, my brother used to take me to Radio Shack. When I saw the computer, what drove me like that I really would want one was the spreadsheets because I already said, oh, I can put my comics in there. That's like, right. you know, the tables. Yeah, well, that's I what, went crazy for that. That's what my I that, that's anyone. what I sold my uh, my business manager on computers for. I I I had a I had an uh, an Atari computer. Oh, you had an Atari? Atari. Oh, had wow. had a machine that basically played games, but you could also yeah, use, I remember my friends you could it. also use it as a computer. It wasn't yeah, a yeah. normal. Yeah, it was like a four hundred. Yeah, it was it, like a big key uh, Atari eight hundred is what I. You had the eight hundred, okay. Yeah, and it was only forty lines across on the screen, <laughs> but I uh, I got one and I was playing with it and I then I went, uh, gee, look, I see this thing online. It goes, I can gr- download it. it. Was I don't know? It took me forever to download it, but it was a thing called. Uh, what was first spreadsheet? Physicalc. Physicalc, yeah, Physicalc. I remember that, yep. And it was a spreadsheet. And so I, Gary came over and I said, let me show you something. What is this? And he looked at it and he went, my God, that's a spreadsheet. Yeah. I said, well, if you put a number here and you put a number here, it puts a number down on the bottom. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And he went, really? And before you knew it, we were buying IBMs. There you go. Yeah, it was like so cool looking at that. But I learned... my high school, my high school electronics teacher, one year was Nolan Bush. Now, the founder, well, from Atari, the founder of Atari, the founder of Atari. Yes. Yeah, and and also and also Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time. I remember reading his bio. Yeah. I yeah. said I I was I like doing a radio. Sh- I was doing my show at uh, KML, and we had a big uh-huh. big uh, parking lot downstairs. And one morning, this guy comes up and says, uh, hi, uh, we're from uh, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater. And looked down in the parking lot. And up down there was this big rat looking up at me, <laughs> waving, yeah, he's at me up. waving at me, waving at me. And I said, that's Chuck E. Cheese. Yep. I said, you're going to attempt to sell pizzas with a rat? <laughs> yeah, you know, you make sense of that. Like, that's a bad move, right? I mean, and, come on. And I said, well, we don't like to think of him as a rat. I said, "Yeah, but he's a rat, isn't he?" he says, well, yeah, he's yeah. a rat. Yeah, you know, they admitted he was a rat. And I went, "Well, so am I." So, get but a guinea or something in here, flipping a pie or something. Nolan <laughs> really? Bush yeah. now is still alive. He's oh, wow. eighty-one old is he? years old. I bless him. Wow. He is. He is. Yeah. Anyway, time for me to play the theme. Mm-hmm. You know what that means. That means I'm off for another 22 hours. See you tomorrow. And then I do another show, and I'm off for another 22 hours, and then I'm off for a long time before we go on the next time. Anyway, good having you here, Charlie. Always fun. It's been fun tonight. Uh, uh, Brian, good having you here as well. Everybody was participating. Some more than others, sometimes more than we'd like. Thank you very much for being here, Tony. And uh, <laughs> Alan, thank you for being here. Thank you to Kevin for being here. And I think I said goodbye to everybody, didn't I? Well, then all of you, get lost till tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see you then. Wave goodbye. That's our, that's our people for tonight, ladies and gentlemen, doing our little, uh, little ritual called the, uh, <laughs> the Ramble. Coming up next is our good friend, Amy Manuel, does a great show and should be taking your calls on Skype. 
at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live. Then we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, same time. Uh, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what to do. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.